Hi people, Daniel from Devil and Sons Guitars here, and today I'm going to walk you through the stages to take your guitar and give it a respray. We're looking at the first stage where we prep it and prime it. Yeah, so this is the first in a series of videos I'm making. We're looking at how to take a guitar that's maybe had some dents in it because it's worn and used sort that out so it's nice and smooth and ready to go and then prime it. If you're using a new guitar body you could skip straight to the priming part of this video. So this series is then going to carry on with putting your bass colours on, putting your varnish on, prepping your varnish for final buff and the mirror glaze video. Now I actually made the mirror glaze video a while ago so that's already up. If you're watching this just as it came out, stay tuned for the next few stages over the next month or so. In this video I filmed myself working on a few different guitars, because each one had a slightly different element on it that's useful to teach. No one of those guitars had every part to it. We're going to look at how to fill damaged bits on a guitar that I've just customised for Zacharias from Inner Axis. It's a Viking themed guitar. Then I'm going to show you how I primed the body on the guitar that I painted to look like a giraffe. And then finally, I have a Shattercaster, one of my guitars that has broken mirror in it. It originally had a, it's a Strat, and it originally had a tremolo floating bridge. I filled that in at the back with a block and put through holes for the strings to go through the body with ferrules on it. Now, at the back, it's got a different wood to the rest of the body where it's been filled. So when that has been primed and sprayed over, you'll see that it's still visible. So I'm going to talk about how you get rid of those sort of marks of where you've filled cavities, etc. So let's get down and look at the first guitar. The filler I like to use is a car body filler. Um, it's this Oscar brand. I use a few different types. This fine one is my favourite. I think in America, the most common brand is called Bondo. But essentially it's a two-part epoxy, you scoop out the main thing, add the accelerator to it, mix it up and then you can apply it and you have a certain amount of time before it hardens. That will depend slightly on the brand and slightly on the amount of hardener you mix in with it. I find that you put a, just like a pea-sized bit of hardener to a golf-sized bit of the filler and that allows you a working time of about 20 minutes, 15-20 minutes. Now what I'm doing here is applying it to a dent that was in the horn of this Razorback guitar, the Viking one that I was working on. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I get enough of the filler into any dent to really fill it up and raise on the surface slightly because I can cut and sand it back later. But I try to smooth the edges out as well. Now, with this one, you have that sort of working time that I mentioned, about 15 minutes or so, but then it hardens to this sort of rubbery texture, which you can cut and shape. And again, you get about 15 minutes of that, depending on the make and the mix that you've used. So what I try to do there is cut away any lumps and smooth out as much as I can. I also sometimes use it to shape and sculpt with. So this stage is great for cutting and shaping on my more extreme guitars where like the xenomorph ones where I'm sculpting the head of an alien on it and then once it's past that stage so half an hour in maybe it's nice and hard and you can start sanding it back so I've sped this up you don't need to see me all in real time sanding away now we're skipping to the guitar that I painted up to look like a giraffe so here I've gone over the whole surface once I filled in these areas with the filler I've gone over the whole surface with a 600 grit sandpaper and what that's done is it's keyed into the paint to allow the primer to absorb to it and it's smoothed out those dents so you can see the grey of the filler you can see some points where the woods come through because I've sanded actually through the surface of the paint but it all becomes a bit more uniform and those scratches are absolutely not a problem when it comes to the primer. Now I've got to clean it up obviously so I use my mix that I've talked about in multiple videos before it's a mix that I learnt about when I did a French polishing course years ago it's essentially 50% MEFs, 50% hydrochloric acid or an equivalent in this case I'm using distilled white vinegar and then you just kind of wash it on and the advantage of this is it evaporates much quicker than water so it's great for cleaning and doesn't absorb into the guitar so much and then I always recommend a tack cloth just before you spray to get rid of any bits of dust tack cloths are a sort of sticky cloth that the dust will adhere to it's really great for cleaning up perfect before you're spraying 
Now when you're spraying, you don't need a big setup like mine, but you should make sure you're in a well-vented area and you're wearing a mask or a respirator because these paints are toxic. Now I'm using High Coat Primer. I like this primer, I've used it a lot. It's an acrylic based primer. Let me know what ones you use. If you leave comments below, then that's recommendations for other YouTubers that, that are coming to, to watch this video. And if you're watching this video now, check out the comments, see what other people recommend. Now what I'm doing here is applying the first coat. Now, when I talk about coat, I actually mean twice over the surface. You'll see me going vertically, or sorry, horizontally first, and then vertically. And it's a light coat. What you need to make sure you do is you have enough primer. So there I run out, but luckily I'd shaken up two cans. Now, what I'm doing is making sure that I start the spray and finish the spray off of the guitar. If you're pointing at the guitar, when you start or finish, you might get a build up of paint. So I'm starting off of the guitar and then coming back over it. So if I just do a quick demo on this drawing of the guitar on the wall of my spray board. First of all, I'll just show you what happens when I initiate the can. You see, it gets quite thick and what can happen is the paint can drip down as is happening here. Now we don't really want that. Now we don't really want that dripping down. So that's why you don't want to hold the can in one place for too long. And that's why you don't want to start the can on the guitar body because otherwise you'd have this on the guitar body. So you start the can off the guitar body where the dripping can happen and then you move across the body. And you turn off at the end. Now what I'm doing here as well is each strip is slightly overlapping the strip before. So you can see the dripping down is where I've squirt, squirted off of the body. You don't want to start it on the body. Off and on. And I'm trying to stay about a hand width away from the guitar body. Now, what you're going to see will depend slightly on what spray paint you're using. Because some spray paints are going to have a pattern where they spray in a circle and some are going to be more like a fan they spray like this with the intense areas being in the middle a fan is great because it allows you to spray a bigger area and also it often means that the load that's coming out of the spray isn't as intense which will help stop the dripping the reason i'm going horizontal and then vertical on my guitars is to make sure that each single coat, a horizontal and a vertical being one coat, covers up everything and there aren't any gaps where you might miss. Like here, where I've missed or it's a bit thinner. So that's why I do horizontal and vertical. Now with most primers like this one, you can do multiple coats in a certain amount, amount of time. Now, for this one, it recommends 10 to 15 minutes between coats and three coats is ideally all you should do in one sitting because otherwise it will just build up too much and it won't dry properly. The undersurface layers won't dry as well. What you would then do between your coats if you needed more is a light sand over the surface with a 600 or 800 grit to prepare for the next spray. So that'd be three coats, maybe leave it 24 hours to dry, sand it and respray. That sanding allows for the addition between the coats. The initial three coats don't need that because they're absorbing into each other while they're in the drying period. But for what I'm doing now on this guitar, I'm only doing one coat. So that's on each side, a vertical and a horizontal covering. And the reason for that is I really want to just have a light coat so I can see what else needs to be done on the guitar. Anything that needs to be filled, sanded or scraped away. And here I am at that stage. I'm essentially using a 600 grit sandpaper to go over the entire body. And what will happen is some of that paint will come away. You can see, especially on the curves and on the edges, the paint comes away. But what that leaves me with is areas like this. This is the back of that guitar where I've filled in the cavity that was used for the tremolo system. And you can see where the paint has, the wood grain has raised as the paint's gone in. You can see the bits that weren't filled properly with the body filler. So I'm gonna sand this as smooth as I can. And then when it's done, I'll do exactly the same, another light coat 
horizontal and vertical all over the surfaces and come back and check it. And then if there's anything else that needs to be sanded or smoothed, I will have to do that again. And that will probably put me in the right stage then to do my three coats of primer in one setting. Remember that bef between each three coats, 24 hours of drying and a light sand to allow the keying for the paint. I'm not putting on too much paint initially because I want to make sure I'm getting rid of all of these imperfections in the body. Great, so just to summarize the video, first thing you want to do if you've got a body that's dented and old or scratched is use the filler to fill in any gaps and sand it back. Sand it back with something like a 600 or an 800 grit and that will also mean that the surface of the guitar will be keyed in ready for the primer. Then you do the one coat of primer. And by one coat I mean vertical and sorry horizontal and then vertical and that will coat the guitar enough so when that's dry you can see any imperfections. The whole point of the primer here is to uniform the body. You'll see dents, you'll see dings, you'll see bits where wood grain has risen where you might have filled an area and then you sand that back. Sanding all smooth, doing any extra filling that might need to be done ready for another coat in the same way and I suggest again just one coat over it horizontal vertical all over the body and then you can check to see that that is fine. Now once you've got that as you're happy with that's when you're ready for the proper three coats of primer and to do that you need to leave that coat that you've just been fine with to dry and then you need to do a light sand on that again with 600 and 800 just to give it some keying for the primer to really adhere to and then you've got that chance to do whatever your primer recommends and for most primers it's going to be something like 10 to 15 minutes flash point between each coat that you can do when you'll be able to put a new coat on without sanding first so three coats 10 to 15 minutes part leave it 24 hours and then you're ready for your painting of your actual base colors. And again, before you put your base color on, you're gonna to want to do a light sand on that. The only reason that might be different is if you're using something like a nitrocellulose lacquer. But I'm gonna make a whole other video about nitrocellulose, so stay tuned for that one. If you've got a new guitar and it body and it doesn't need any filling or anything, I still recommend doing this first single light coat to then look over the body. And what you might find is there are some imperfections. Also, if it's a brand new wood, a good suggestion to do is do a first coat where you use something like a sanding sealer before you use your primer. Sanding sealer seals in all the wood to make sure it doesn't absorb the paints in different ways. And that sometimes causes that grain to raise when you're putting the paint on. Here's a sanding sealer I like to use. It's from Chestnut Productions. It's acrylic based, so it's really compatible with the other paints I'm using, like the high coat, base coat primer. Right, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions or tips, leave them there as well for other people to read. But until next time, happy strumming. <laughs>